My rocket launcher is 100% complete and ready to go. Since last video, I finished the handle. I have 3D printed attachments, finished them, painted them, and installed them. Now it looks just like it does in the game. I also installed the ignition system on the launcher. These are little silver panels that I attach to springs and they're wired into the ignition system. They are spring loaded so that they ride up against this cylinder, which has the same silver plates right here. And these are wired through this to this little terminal. That way when the rocket's in the tube, it can get wired into that. And then whenever this spins, it'll fire whichever tube is lined up with those contacts. And speaking of rockets, I need to make some because this is a rocket launcher and I don't have any rockets. This model is an exact replica of what is fired from the Spanker in almost every Halo game. The problem with it is I have serious doubts that it'll be stable and fly straight because it's shaped like a Pringles can. I could just throw a rocket in it and go out and fire it and see what happens. But if it's not stable, I have no idea where it's gonna go and it would be really dangerous. There is a simple thing that I can do that's not dangerous, and that is called the string test. By tying a string around the balance point of the rocket and spinning it around your head, you get an idea if your rocket is going to fly stable or not. If it's nose first, you might be good. If it's tail first, you know it'll be unstable. But that test only tells me two things about this, where the balance point is at, and that this thing would be really dangerous to fire right now because it would go all over the place, which is why I made this my homemade wind tunnel and rocket calipers. The wind tunnel is pretty simple. There's an air filter and aluminum honeycomb here to give me laminar flow. And then I stick a fan in that end and it makes air move through here. The rocket calipers are a little more complicated. I twist this bolt back here, it tightens these two points together, which lets me grab the rocket anywhere along its body. It can spin very easily because the points grabbing it are really small. Now we can do some really accurate testing. When I put the rocket into the rocket calipers at the balance point and place it in the wind tunnel, it tries to fly backwards, which is the same result as the string test, which is not surprising. So why is our rocket flying backwards? Your natural intuition might say that we need a nose cone on the front, but if we put a nice long pointy nose cone on this, that would actually make the problem worse right now because our issue is that our center of gravity or the balance point of the rocket is behind our center of pressure, the balance point of the rocket from wind resistance. Our center of gravity needs to be in front of our center of pressure for it to fly forwards. An extreme example of this is the lawn dart. Old school lawn darts had a heavy metal spike at the front of the dart and large lightweight plastic fins at the rear, which meant the center of gravity was all the way at the front and the center of pressure was all the way at the back. This made them extremely stable so that they would always fly forwards. And now it's time to do actual rocket science and prove that concept with these two identical looking rockets. This rocket lawn dart is going to fly forward the way you would expect it to, because it has big fins on the back that move the center of pressure towards the rear of the rocket, and it has a little bit of weight in the nose cone, which moves the center of gravity forward, which is why it flies nose first. This rocket lawn daughter, on the other hand, has very little weight at the nose, and its fins are made out of steel, and it has lead inside of its body, which moves the center of gravity, or its balance point, way back towards the rear of the rocket, and there is no weight in the front. It has the same center of pressure, but the center of gravity is behind it, which means it flies fins first. Because I wanna use an exact replica of what's in the game, which is what this model is, I can't change the way this looks, which means I can't change its center of pressure, but I can change its center of gravity. So I can find the center of pressure because I have rocket calipers by mounting them at different locations along the body and finding the point at which the rocket doesn't try to orient itself into the wind, either nose or tail first. And I can simulate the center of gravity with the rocket calipers by mounting it at different locations where it wants to orient itself nose first into the wind very quickly. I know that gives me stable flight then, and I just have to add the weight to the nose that moves its balance point to that location. And now my center of gravity is where I want it to be. Unfortunately, I had to add so much weight that we are at the maximum weight limit for the motor. This probably won't be going fast enough when it leaves the launch tube to have enough airspeed to be stable. I still want to use this model and I want to see if doing one minor cosmetic change will be enough to get the weight down on this. Earlier, I said that adding a long pointy nose cone to this would not help out our situation. That's because the extra material out here would cause more drag in front, which would move our center of pressure forward 
and we don't want that. We also don't need a long pointy nose cone because that's only necessary when you start to approach the speed of sound, and these won't be going that fast. The speeds they're going, just having a rounded over nose cone is plenty to reduce drag on the front of the rocket. But what matters even more is having nice, smooth, glossy paint to reduce wind resistance, which will move our center of pressure backwards on the rocket so that we don't have to add as much weight so that it'll go faster. And with a small cone like this, it still looks really close to what's in the game. Added the weight to the nose to this one to get the balance point up to where I wanted the center of gravity to be. It's time to weigh it and see if we save weight over the other rocket which was 15.8 ounces. And this is 12.2. So just by rounding over this and putting nice smooth paint on it, we've saved almost a quarter of a pound between these two rockets. Now that we've done all the testing that we can here in the garage and we're fairly certain they're gonna be stable, it's safe enough to go out and fire them with actual rocket motors to see how they do. So now we're out in the middle of nowhere. We have a gigantic hay bale backdrop and it's been raining for three days. So everything is soaked and we have fire suppression equipment anyway. So it's a perfect condition to fire these sideways. Let's see how they do. Three, two, one. I'd say that's probably still not stable and it's definitely not moving fast enough. Let's try the round nose cone one that weighs less. Three, two, one. Well, that was an interesting test. We do have extra rocket motors. <laughs> so we can try it one more time, maybe. The rocket wasn't damaged at all because it only went two feet. So I loaded up another motor and we're gonna test fire this one again and see how it does. Two, one. <laughs> I think we need a much lighter rocket. Both of those rockets did what I was afraid they were going to do. They started coming out of the tube and because they were moving too slow, the front was able to start falling enough that it made the arc towards the ground really tight and they hit fast. This one actually was going towards the ground so quickly that you can actually see in the video that it tried to correct itself and the tail started to move back down before it ended up hitting the ground. So there's only one solution. These need to go faster. I did a quick redesign on this and it looks almost identical to the last rocket except I removed a lot of the fins on the front for less resistance on the front of the rocket but the big difference is that there's a motor in this one that has almost three times the thrust of the last one and the rocket weighs just about the same. So let's give it a shot. Three, two, one. Well, that rocket flew great. It was dead level until the wind caught it and it just missed our target and then it went really far. The reason it did so well is because it had an extremely powerful motor in it. This is an Estes E9. It's one of the largest Estes motors that you can get. And the nine means that it averages nine newtons of thrust during its burn. This is what we were using that was the smaller motor that wasn't powerful enough. It's an E26. It burns for a much shorter time, but it puts out three times the thrust. So even though it's much smaller, it's almost three times as powerful. And the rocket that you just watched me fire was an F67, which is significantly larger than this. And it's equivalent to seven and a half of these Estes motors, except it weighs the same as only one. So if we're gonna continue using these and get rockets that fly nice and fast and straight, we're gonna need a new location because when that rocket missed the target, it went really far and we spent half the day looking for it. Preferably something that we can fire down a hill into other hills coming up. That way the rocket can't really go anywhere and it saves us a bunch of time. Luckily, we found that location because there's four more other designs of rockets that we need to test launch to see what their flight characteristics are. An even more optimized design. It's starting to not really look like the game anymore, but because of the big motor in the back, extended nose cone, that way I can get the weight further out, trimmed fins in the front, extended fins in the back, and the body's been smoothed, which makes this a more stable rocket and way less. Let's see if this one does better. Three, two, one. veered right off and went smack dab right into a tree. I'm not upset about it. It's so far removed from what the actual game model is, I don't really care. Plus, I tried to keep the weight really low on it so I knew there was a chance it wasn't gonna be stable. 
So on to the next one. Those rockets are just a strange shape. It's difficult to make them really stable. We have to add so much weight to the nose and run a huge motor. If we do this, which doesn't look anything like the game, traditional rocket shape, we have to add very little weight to the nose to get this to be stable. We can run the smaller motors. I put kicks on the fins so that it's spin stabilized. This weighs a quarter of the weight of the last rocket. So let's see how this does. Three, two, one. <laughs> After reviewing the footage, it's pretty obvious why that one failed so spectacularly. <laughs> this is very strong spring steel wire. It's the wire that I used to support the front end of the rocket so that it would sit parallel in the tube. Fortunately, with motors this powerful, it was enough force that it squished those springs so that it rode like this in the tube. So as soon as it came out, it was already pointed at the ground, which is why it flew so bad. And unfortunately, the next rocket is the exact same design, except with the biggest motor. So you can guess how that did. Because the Halo launcher looks so awesome, I wanted to design a rocket that was equally as awesome, which is why I made this. And this is a folding fin design that I came up with, and this is the first iteration, and I printed it out, and I figured I'd just bring it along and see how it does. There's been a lot of improvements since I printed this, but uh, this will give me an idea of how it might do. Three, two, one. Yes! <laughs> Absolutely beautiful! I think we found our design. After all that testing, now we know what works and what doesn't work. Which means now I need to build a bunch of rockets because I know what's gonna work and a bunch of targets to shoot them at. Which means next time I get to take my real life M41 Spanker out to actually launch rockets instead of just playing Halo songs. This is all supported by the people on Patreon and the digital files for all of them are available to that group of people, as well as the stuff from the actual launcher itself. And because of their generous support, not only are we able to afford a bunch of these really powerful F67 motors, but we got some of these monster G motors too. So make sure you're subbed with notifications turned on if you want to see what it looks like when we let one of these off of the chain. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.